Okay, so to identify the center of the top of the mirror box, I'm just going to use a tried and true way of making a diagonal from corner to corner. So where it crosses, I know, is my center. So now I'm going to put an indention in my center. I'm going to take a quarter inch drill bit, and I'm going to make sure I'm nice and vertical. I'm going to drill a hole so that it will accept our circle cutting jig on the, uh, for the router. So since this is too deep for my drill press, again, I'm just going to use a speed square and my tri-square here. That way I know that I'm keeping my drill as vertical as possible. So there we have the hole. Next, we just set up our router. Okay, so as you can see, I'm, I'm doing this on the ground because if I'm short and if I were to do it on a, uh, on a workbench, it would stand it up to where it's kind of uncomfortable. Ideally, you want to probably do it to where it's about waist height whenever you're cutting, but for the sake of making this video, I'm going to go ahead and do it here on the floor. So what, what I've got here is I've got my circle cutting jig on top of the mirror box. I'm going to make a round hole. Now, if you don't have a router, again, you can use a jigsaw. This doesn't have to be perfectly round, um, but just for the sake of aesthetics, I want to make mine perfectly round. Um, but again, just use a jigsaw if you don't have a router. And I'm choosing 17 inches as an outside diameter. I want to keep that as small as possible um, and still be able to get the mirror in because one, it's going to block ambient light, so it kind of works as almost a baffle. Two, um, you got to put the uh, truss fasteners on top of the mirror box. You don't want them too close to that hole because we also have a mirror box cover that's going to reside on top of that hole whenever it's not in use. So ideally you want to be able to put your truss on and off the telescope while that mirror box cover is on there. And if that hole is too large, it's going to push those fasteners off the top of the box or to where they run into the bearing whenever you're trying to put them off and on. So we don't want that. So 17 inches on a 16 inch scope is perfect for uh, the way I built scopes. So here we go. Again, make a uh, small pass at a time. You don't want to try to take it all out in one pass. I, use, I usually do just over an eighth of an inch um, at a time when I'm doing the router. So three or four passes around should have it. <laughs> Okay, now before I completed the cut, I don't know if you noticed that on my very last pass, I went up and I skipped over about an eighth of an inch, and then I went ahead and went back all the way down with the plunge router. Then I came to my beginning over here, and I finished about an eighth of an inch, so I left about an eighth of an inch wood over here, so I've got just a little bit of wood holding the, the uh, circle in place on both sides. That way it doesn't fall because what can happen is if it does fall and it just slightly tilts, it'll get a hold of that router bit and spin. It can really freak you out and it can possibly hurt you. So that's what I do and I'll just finish it up with just a little flush cut saw or if you just have like a coping saw or even a chisel. All you have to do is just chisel out that one little bit of piece of wood or those two little pieces of wood and then you're uh, top is going to be open. So that's that. Next, we're going to round over the edges of the mirror box and the bottom of the mirror box. All right, so now I have put a quarter inch round over bit in the router table, and I'm going to proceed to round over the corners of the finger joints on the mirror box and then also the bottom of the mirror box. Now, you might ask why we don't do the top right away. We're not going to do 
the top because we're going to put the Formica on there before we round it over. We're going to put the Formica on, we will flush cut the Formica, then we will round it over. It makes it a lot easier than rounding it over and then trying to flush cut the Formica. You get a strange gap and it can kind of cut your fingers. It's no good. I've actually done it that way by mistake. So we're going to do the round over part really quick. Okay, that's that. So, all we have left to do is laminate the uh, Formica on top. I keep saying Formica. Formica I use is called Black Sparkle. I like the texture, it's nice and tough, and it gives you a nice, uh, not a high gloss, but a nice black finish, so it, it's really good on anti-reflective. Um, so we still have to do that, and then we still have to make the four holes for the connection points for the truss, but we're in no hurry to do that. We can always do that either after we start finishing, before we start finishing, it really doesn't matter. So from here, what I will do is, and I won't even make a video about this, I'll just tell you what I do. I go back and I look through the wood and any imperfection, any small gap I see, I'm gonna use a wood filler to fill that so that whenever I do ultimately sand it down and get ready to finish, I don't have any little bad spots in my finish. So that's what I'm going to do from here, is I'm going to go identify any small hole or any tear out. I'm going to fill it with wood putty and I'll let it dry. And then what we would do next is uh, sand that down with 150 or 120 grit. Um, and we'll go from there. So next up for the video wise is going to be uh, laminate the Formica on top. Well, I thought I was recording, and apparently I wasn't recording on this last one, and it's not like I can recontact contact seam in it. So what I was doing is, I took the piece of Formica, I flipped it upside down, I use a foam brush, and I spread a thin layer of just regular old contact cement on the bottom of the Formica, and then also on the top of the mirror box. I pointed out a couple things. You want to make sure that your Formica is cut slightly larger than the top of the mirror box because once this stuff bonds together, it doesn't like to separate. So be sure that this is large enough, and after you've got it, spread a nice thin layer, let it set for about, oh, 10 minutes. Just read the instructions on the contact cement uh, can, and it will tell you exactly how long. And whenever you're ready, you'll flip this on top, and you'll bond it together. Now to do that, you can just use hand pressure, Flip the mirror box over and you can put some heavy stuff on top of it and let it set for a bit. Not even that long. It doesn't take long at all to set up. And what I will do is I'll use a uh, just a little roller I made specifically for the contact cement. So now we're just waiting for the contact cement to set up. Take a few more minutes. I'll flip it over and I'll show you how I bond it together and we'll move on from there. Okay, so now we are going to press the top put the top on the top. So that's what we're doing here. Make sure you line it up good because you don't get two chances on this, just one chance. When it's down, it is down. So after I just put hand pressure, I'll just move it around like so. I'm going to make sure there's no nothing abrasive on top. And I'll take the little roller I made, nothing more than just a little piece of cherry wood and some white oak and a bolt fashioned through it. And then I'm going to make sure I've got even pressure on this. Okay, that's it. Now I'm going to go inside and eat dinner, and that'll be just about enough time before I'll come back out. I'll use a flush cut router bit, and I'll flush it nice with the uh, sides of the mirror box here. Then we'll round it over, sand down the mirror box, put a hole in top here, and we're all done. That's it, before we start finishing the mirror box.